Hi, friends. You're tuned in to Legal Means Business, a podcast by Leeway. We are joined by some amazing guests who help us identify how to take your legal function and career to the next level. I'm your host, Steph Smith, and we're talking all things legal ops and legal tech, as well as other critical skills needed to help you thrive in the evolving in-house arena. Don't forget, you can watch us on YouTube or listen on the go through Spotify or Apple Podcasts. If you enjoy the conversation, please do hit subscribe and let us know what you think on social. I think fun law is probably anything that allows you to challenge those things that suck about your job and to find a better way of doing them. Whether that's, whether that's, you know, moving away from this copy paste culture where we've just, you know, abandoned all hope of innovation or creativity Mm -hmm. and, and trying to find ways of bringing that creativity back into your job um, and into the way that you do things. The words fun and law don't often come in the same sentence. But what would it mean if we started weaving fun into the day-to-day lives of in-house legal professionals? Sure, it might sound a bit flippant at first, but more and more studies are proving that the value of a fun approach to tasks can impact the quality of the output and the fulfillment and sustainability of individuals and teams. Thankfully, in this episode, we're joined by two advocates for fun law. Elizabeth de Stadler calls herself a rehabilitated lawyer and is now founding director of New Era legal consulting firm, Novcon. Elizabeth's colleague, Liesel Van Zyl, is a communication designer and plain language enthusiast. And today they share exactly what fun law is, as well as how in-house legal professionals can embed fun in their day to day. Hello, Elizabeth, Liesl, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the Legal Means Business podcast. How are we doing today? Very well, well, thanks. Doing very well, sun is shining. Yes, same here in sunny Paris, uh, actually, so I'm very much enjoying it, although my Scottish skin, not so much, perhaps, (laughs) but... (laughs) Um, But I'm excited to be chatting with you both today, especially because we have a super interesting topic, in my opinion, uh, which is fun law. And I'm sure that might be a bit of a a paradox to some, um, but to to kick off, it'd be great to understand why should law be more fun? Ah, okay. Why are we even talking about this? (laughs) Why? Well, (laughs) have you you made lawyers? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you, you, you just said it, there's a bit of a paradox, which uh, mm. makes it all the more fun to me. Um, but why we should we should uh, have this sort of as a as a aim, you know, having more fun. Um, it, for us, it's the it's twofold. Um, the first reason is um, as a lawyer, being a lawyer myself, I'm mm-hmm. all too aware of the fact that uh, that we are a little bit. I always say we're a little, little bit blue. Right. Um, there's been loads of research done. Um, that shows that that lawyers are by and large uh, incredibly unhappy at work. And sure, Mm -hmm. some of that is down to actual mental health issues, and and we're not suggesting that fun law could be a cure for that. But um, I think that a lot of the times, the way in which we approach the law leads to to these kind of unhappy outcomes. Um, Mm -hmm. The the other part, and Liesl, you you can talk talk about that as the quote-unquote (laughs) non-lawyer. I'm not allowed to call (laughs) her that. She's an information designer. (laughs) But, but you're trying to abolish that phrase. <laughs> yeah. So there's a very uh, there's a there's, there's a very real um, chance that if if you're having more fun, your clients having more fun, the person reading your contracts having more fun, and and that can that can aid in understanding. But Liesl, as an information designer, that's your thing. How do we how do we make people understand things that are complicated better by making them smile? <laughs> no, absolutely. I think. Um, one of the most important aspects of, of fun law is obviously experiencing your your job as a lawyer um, in a in a more fun way, but also transferring that that bit of fun to your client and and your audience and and sharing the smiles, making them smile through your work. Um, yeah, yeah. 
I can, yeah, I mean, I'm fully bought in. Why would you not want to have a more enjoyable daily experience? But I suppose, yeah, it makes, it, it results in kind of better outcomes yeah. as well, right? Like it's not just, uh, oh, let's just have fun for the sake of it. it. It does result in better collaboration, better understanding as you were talking so about. So I brought a prop today. Um, oh wow! A very large pencil. Although Lisa will tell you, I also have, <laughs> I have small hands. I have very, very small hands. But so um, we we talk a lot about you know the fun law. It might seem like seem like a very frivolous thing, but it's actually backed by quite a lot of science. Um, and and mm -hmm. where the pencil comes in is many many years ago uh, there was an experiment um, done by a bunch of behavioral economists or cognitive scientists, as they're also sometimes known. Uh, where they would give a complex piece of text, and I think we can all agree that legal writing is very, very complicated, mm. to, yeah. to two sets of people. Um, one set is the control group, and the other set, they were asked to to put a pencil in their mouths like this, lengthwise. Now, I can't do it with this pencil in my mouth. Not, I'm not <laughs> <to> try that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but what that does is it triggers the same muscles in your face as uh, the ones that get triggered when you when you smile, which in turn releases dopamine in your brain as well as serotonin, which are my two favorite drugs, and and that mm -hmm. decreases something that's called cognitive load. So it it literally improves things like your short term memory, which is what you need in order to um, pay sustained attention to a complicated sentence or a complicated page or whatever the case may be. And they, they found that, that the group that, that had the pencils in their mouths uh, were, were a lot more at ease and found it a lot easier to decipher the, the, the dense piece of text that they were asked to, to um, review. So it's actually backed mm. by science, but also it's kind of common sense, right? We all know dopamine and serotonin makes your brain work better. Um, mm -hmm. It motivates you as well. So Liesl and I also often work on um, finding ways to release um, dopamine in other ways, like you know, another thing that 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 makes people uh, people's brains release dopamine is when you complete the task. So if, if through how you design your documents, you can make them feel a sense of progress, they're mm -hmm. going to find the experience more enjoyable. Mm, um, you've seen those yes. you've seen those contracts or those documents that are just these walls of grey text, and you kind of feel like I'm. This is, this is impossible to finish. Even if we mm -hmm. think of something like privacy notices that you, Elizabeth, how many days a year do you spend reading privacy notices? Um, <laughs> you feel like you're never, it's never going to end. So why even bother? And you, you get this sort of feeling of hopelessness, even if you're not aware of it. It just, you know, it's not a fun mm -hmm. task. And so in the way that we can, we design and the way that we write, we can help people feel like, you know, we're breaking the task into smaller manageable parts and it just makes everything, it makes everything simpler. And I don't know, can we say funner? I think you can yeah. say funner. <laughs> Fun, funner, funner, funny. It's a word now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, so it's not always, it's not always about raucous laughter, although that, that is sometimes um, fun to try and, and elicit, but it's, <laughs> it's often just about a smile or a sense of achievement or, uh, the UX designers, what is the word that they use, Liesl? Delight. Delight. Yeah. Mm. De Delight. Oh, which is yes. such a lovely word. I mean, just saying it makes me feel delight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, me too, actually. Yeah. yeah. I can certainly <laughs> relate to that. I'd say delight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah, it just makes, as you say, it's actually common sense if we think about it, isn't it? Mm. And it's something that doesn't feel... Um, it almost, it's certainly going against the grain, I would say, mm. even in a wider business context, you know, you don't necessarily assume or expect to have fun at work. Um, and particularly, as you said, for, for lawyers. Yeah. So it's, it's a really, really interesting concept. I think what's important, say. what Elizabeth said earlier is, is you, it doesn't have to be frivolous. So having fun mm -hmm. is not unprofessional. It's not um, you know, it's not that raucous laughter necessarily, but I think fun law is probably anything that allows you to challenge those things that suck about your job and to find yeah. a better way of doing them. Whether that's, whether that's, you know, moving away from this copy paste culture where we've just, you know, abandoned all hope of innovation or creativity <laughs> and, and try to find ways of bringing that creativity back in into your job um and into the way that you do things 
And that's going to look mm-hmm. different for, for different people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And what exactly do we mean when we say fun law? And I've heard you talk about um, the kind of fun law manifesto. I'd be interested to hear more. Yeah, so when I talk about it at the moment, at, and my um, my areas of specialization tends to shift from year to year, um, I, I'm at the moment reading a book called Range, which tells me that it's okay that, that uh, my attention span seems to be a bit limited. Um, <laughs> I think I've heard of that book, yes. <laughs> but but so, so at the moment, I'm focusing on, on using humor in professional in the professional context so so we've we've been mm-hmm. looking a lot at using humor in contracts and yes it can mm-hmm. be done and it has been done um, and I even found examples as I as I've been researching this of, of people um, using humor in a in a litigious context right so where and um, this was this specific story was uh, about a, a intellectual property infringement um, two gentlemen opened a pop-up bar um, with a, a stranger things theme. I'm sure you're familiar with the series. It's quite topical at the yes. moment. Um, but this is a number of years ago and um, they hadn't asked Netflix for permission as one has to do. And they wrote them this wonderful season, this is later, absolutely hilarious. So, so funny. I mean, it ends off with something like, you know, don't don't make us phone your mother. She's much less forgiving than Tim <laughs> um, And I thought, how how novel is this? I mean, usually cease and desist letters are, are really unpleasant, and I'm pretty sure that that the guys not only stopped infringing on on their in, on Netflix's intellectual property, but they that I in my head I, I imagine that they went on to collaborate on other projects, yeah. right? So, um, mm-hmm. often at the moment, as I said, I'm focusing on on being funny in contracts, um, you know, putting. The zombie apocalypse in your force majeure clause, um, for instance, <laughs> um, to see just to see see what happens. But I think that that's what Lisa was saying. You know, the key to to having um, a little bit more fun at, at work is in um, feeling the freedom to experiment, and that that freedom to experiment is is very important to us. And and one of the ways in which we do that, and we've seen this pattern with other what I would say uh, people who I consider to be fun lawyers, is that. Um, they all collaborate with other disciplines, mm. and they all mm-hmm. um, they all have multidisciplinary teams, um, and and they they all have have this concept of range, right? They they incorporate things from other disciplines, other They're fields. They're curious. I think They're that's curious, that's one yeah. of the key. Yeah, and just They're experimenting. <laughs> I think the things that the things that fascinate us would probably like people would never imagine where we draw inspiration from. Um, and as Elizabeth said, it's really interdisciplinary. We have a fantastic team. Um, I'm an information designer. There are obviously lawyers, change manager. Um, we have mm-hmm. people working with us who are experts in in user experience design. You know, and you learn so much from them. Uh, um, and there are these these problems, I'm going to call them challenges that, that lawyers have faced for a number of, you know, probably decades and, and haven't known how to solve mm-hmm. them. And, and maybe speaking to someone from a different discipline, you, you gain other skills um, that, you know, hostage negotiators or... Um, yeah, that's a true story. Liesl took a course <laughs> in hostage negotiation at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> I mean, as one does, Just right? Just for fun? Or... <laughs> yes, for fun, because I thought it was very interesting. I've always had an, an interest in, in psychology and especially cognitive psychology, and it's influenced our work tremendously. And we learned, you know, we found that there are so many things from, from hostage negotiation that we can apply when, when we write, you know? How to, how to mm-hmm. make a connection with the person that, that you're speaking to, um, how to mm-hmm. empathize with the audience. But then I know Elizabeth uh, draws from... Uh, on biomimicry a lot and and slime mold and and what we can learn from hive mentality and things like that oh wow biomimicry is really is it's it's fascinating um we we went to a workshop it's about learning um lessons from nature from nature here there were chickens in the workshop learning lessons from nature (laughs) And um, I'm only slightly jealous. <laughs> you know, it was absolutely fantastic. But you wouldn't think that you could you could apply a problem solving technique like biomimicry in a legal context, but you absolutely can um, because some of the sort of solutions 
are solutions to communication problems. And I think that that lies at the root of why law is so terribly mm. unfun um, mm -hmm. is a communication problem. So mm -hmm. if we can be innovative in other contexts about how we communicate with each other, why can't we apply that to the, the legal context? There's absolutely no reason yeah. except convention. Yeah. Right. Yes, you're so right. And it's breaking through that, isn't it? Where I think people are, are probably struggling most at this point. But I think on, you said curious. I think from what I can absolutely. tell from you both, it sounds like you're both super curious and as you say <laughs> drawing inspiration from everything around you and kind of keeping a yeah. keeping your eyes wide open um mm. yeah it's a mindset it's a it's a, it's it's a you just open yourself up to because oh, we talk a lot about something um that i i refer to as legal exceptionalism and I mean, you you guys work in the legal tech field and there's now legal UX and there's legal design. And we tend to plonk legal in front of everything. And it comes from this mm -hmm. notion that somehow legal problems are different to other problems. Yes. And that you can't solve legal problems if you don't have a, a law degree, for instance, is, is another example of, of legal exceptionalism. And, and we have to stop doing that. We have to be open to learn from weird places and weird disciplines um, and I mm -hmm. always when I whatever I'm reading whether it's you know behavioral economics or whether it's Winnie the Pooh I think how can I apply this and I mean I'm very serious about Winnie the Pooh we found yes. many many instances where we could learn mm -hmm. from from Pooh Bear um, <laughs> <laughs> or Harry Potter for that matter or um, you know I have a, the Gruffalo we <laughs> you know any anything um you can take what you can learn from 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 that and, and apply it in your mm -hmm. in your day and and it's just about having that incredibly open mindset um mm -hmm. and it's so much yeah. fun it is so much fun because it's so much more <laughs> it is interesting so much fun. <laughs> yeah and yeah i can imagine when you're taking inspiration and uh learnings from other contexts and applying them to a legal context i mean that's it sounds like a fun challenge, a fun opportunity, and one that's going to, as you mentioned, lead to innovation and hopefully breaking down those uh, thing. Oh, it's always been done this way. So yeah, I think that's a great point. And you talked touched on it there again about the kind of interdisciplinary learnings. Mm. And I think most of our listeners are in house legal professionals. So I think for them, there's a huge opportunity to do that, considering they're working in a business with teams with all different specialisms and backgrounds and uh, perspectives. So I think there's a huge opportunity there for in-house uh, legal people yeah, we, to learn. We found that some of our favorite projects, the best projects that we do with in-house legal teams is where in-house legal sits with marketing and sits with sales and sits with, you know, all kinds mm -hmm. of departments that they wouldn't normally collaborate with. Um, mm -hmm. And they learn from each other, right? So suddenly mm -hmm. marketing has a better understanding of why legal seems to be the, you know, put the brakes on, on some of their campaigns um, because they, there's risk. Yeah. And legal for the first time maybe understands, you know, marketing's point of view and going, okay, well, we can't speak to customers this way because we have this fantastic way that we speak to them in our, in our ads and we place them at the center of everything we do. And then when, when they get to signing up or, you know, reading the terms and conditions, it's as though we have a completely different personality as a company. Yeah, um, you, mm -hmm. and so bringing them together and, and helping them understand, you know, that that makes for a really interesting and fun project. Yeah, and you don't have to um, become a specialist in these areas. So we dabble in a lot of things. I, I don't think, although I think she might be good at it. I don't know if Liesl will be able to um, go and resolve a hostage situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> But you learn just enough to know um, whether whether an idea is worth sort of mining and then you find other people that mm -hmm. already specialize in it. Um, and for in-house mm -hmm. teams, it's comparatively sort of easy. So if, if we say one of the hallmarks for me of fun law is it's intensely um, user-centric, right? So what mm -hmm. I mean by that is if I write a contract or a set of terms and conditions, I'm not writing it for me, I'm writing it for mm -hmm. the reader, um, whoever mm -hmm. that might be. So often with in-house lawyers, when they write, they're writing for an internal audience. In other words, they're writing to other parts of the organization or they might from time to time be writing to the customers of that organization. And with, when you're writing in-house, 
go look at other in-house communications. Go look at, you know, training interventions that were successful before in other areas, not just not just legal content. Mm. Um, we often mm-hmm. we often get to uh, the, into um, these big corporates where they do fantastic training, skills development with their staff, with one exception, and that is the minute it's about compliance or legal risk, it's a boring mm. person standing in front of a room full of bored people. Th- that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> and we go, but why, if you can manage to make you know, supply chain management sexy, why can't you do that with the legal content? Yeah. And it's the same with customers, as Liesl said, you know, then go speak to your customer insights team, your mar- your marketing team. They know, they already know how to do this. It's mm. legal content is just content. Mm-hmm. There are plenty yeah. of other examples of technical content that gets translated into human. Why not mm-hmm. the legal content? Yeah. And that yeah, is also fun. Yeah, you're completely fun, right. <laughs> So why should we be paying attention to and embracing fun law? Well, firstly, humour helps your brain to remember. Laughing triggers the brain's dopamine system. And yes, the anticipation of a pleasurable reward is how your brain motivates you to do certain things, but it also helps you remember for longer periods of time. Laughing together also builds trust. When we laugh, oxytocin is released and that creates and builds bonds of trust. Humour also helps us cope with stressful and trying times. And this is because of the physiological result of laughter, which brings about an an endorphin-mediated opiate effect. Laughter also helps with creative problem solving. Research at Northwestern University found that lifting the mood of a group using comedy increased their likelihood of having an aha moment. And lastly, it's said that funnier people tend to be successful. And you can learn more about this on Novcon's blog at novcon.co.za. And from an in-house perspective then, how can these people go about embedding fun law into their their daily lives? Well, two things from from my side. Um, First off, we need to stop taking ourselves quite so seriously. I think mm-hmm. so. Uh, I, as I said at the moment, I'm I, when I when I'm talking about this, I'm I'm talking specifically about the use of humor. And if you want to reconnect with your sense of humor in the professional context, there's this fantastic book called Humor Seriously, and it also has a website that has a really great questionnaire that helps you um, reconnect with your sense of humor. Um, mm-hmm. So bring some levity. Don't take it quite so seriously. Understand that what is serious or important to you isn't necessarily important to the person you're speaking to. Um, you know, mm-hmm. meet, meet them where they are. Don't expect them to come yeah. to you. And then um, for me, this the second part is is to say you, you don't start working like this um, by writing a memo or an email to your organization. It happens one conversation at a time. And for me, mm-hmm. another hallmark of fun law is building these authentic relationships with your stakeholders, to use that terrible term, <laughs> you know, with, with the people <laughs> yeah. in your organization. And um, take the time, yeah. have a coffee, have a beer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. And Liesl, do you have any other I advice think, for... You know, it, it's, it's not an easy change. It's, it's, a, it's a cultural change. And, and it does start, yeah. as Elizabeth said, with, with conversations. And try and be open. Try and... I don't know if you've heard of the yes, but, and yes, and mentality. So the yes, but mentality yes. just sees a problem with everything. Like, what if we tried... What if we set ourselves a challenge and, and try to write this contract in a in a more client centric way and someone will go yes but this is the way we've always done it or yes but it's going to take so much time and challenge yourself to go yes and so what if we wrote this contract in a client centered way yes and what if we also got someone from marketing to help us with the writing yes and what if we also asked you know a customer for their input and see how that builds and see how you know, the creativity flows from that and, and it just feeds your soul in a different way. Yeah, it feels like something that would really have huge ripple ripple effects. It could. It does. Very positive <laughs> ripple effects. You know, and your, your reward is that first time someone says, you're not like other lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or it, it really, I mean, and that's, that circles back to, to what I said. You know, our first objective was just to, to get lawyers to reconnect with their love of the law and to have more mm-hmm. fun at work. And whether that is buying insanely big pencils or, you know, keeping a, a, a book with Winnie the Pooh quotes on your desk just in case. Or, <laughs> you know, just uh, I think it was um, Ursula Le Guin um, who said, you know, the, the creative adult is the child who survived. Like, mm. I, I firmly believe being more playful. If, if, if funny is not your vibe, right? If you're not a funny person, mm-hmm. try mm-hmm. and try and play a little bit more at work. Mm-hmm. Get a hobby. Um, you know, that, that reminds you of when you were a child. Um, mm-hmm. I fell off yeah. of my hobby this year. <laughs> But, you know, maybe not not a dangerous hobby. <laughs> oh, is, is it a horse? Or? No, a skateboard. <laughs> a skateboard? Yes. Yeah, just, just find, find, bring toys to work if you have to. Yes. Like it, it really yeah, I think that that's a great point, actually. I was going to ask about that. If people don't necessarily identify themselves as oh, I'm, you know, I'm not a super funny person. I don't make, I, I make j- dad jokes, but nothing more. Well, dad jokes um, are phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> how, yeah, how would you um, advise that people who, who don't necessarily uh, relate with their, their funny bone to um, to get involved with fun law? Yeah, I, th- I mean, it's not funny law, right? It's fun law. Mm-hmm. So yes, embrace your creativity. Find something, you know, there are things that you are interested in outside of work surely Mm -hmm. hopefully hopefully otherwise we have a different set of problems most (laughs) of us have something that we're interested in outside of work and find a way to bring that into your job because that brings you joy and we we also like to say you know people often speak about a work-life balance and there is just life Mm -hmm. you spend so much time so much of that life at work or, or doing work yeah. and if you don't enjoy it that's a miserable existence right so so try and mm-hmm. incorporate those things that you love anyway I love colorful things I love colors and I love doodling and I love drawing and I found a way to bring that into my job right so mm-hmm. part of the design part of taking notes in every single color having color around me that makes me happy so I found a way to bring that in into my work I love Mm -hmm. psychology I found a way to bring that into my work I love Mm -hmm. you know Legos and that's in my that's part of my work (laughs) so yeah so see if see if there's a way for you to incorporate those things that you love into you know the thing that you have to spend most of your day doing Mm -hmm. and that's likely to excuse me that's likely to push your uh push the boundaries and Absolutely. innovate as we as we talked about and, and result in new and hopefully more impactful outcomes whatever I want to tell you I want to tell on. you the Gruffalo story right so we spoke about the Gruffalo yes, please. Just briefly earlier and we were in quite a serious project we were uh, rewriting uh, terms and conditions for a loyalty program mm-hmm. and in the meeting you know a, a, someone joked about we have to you know bring bring down the reading age because the audience has a, a lower reading age um and we have to someone someone joked and said well let's write it like the gruffalo and everyone was like ha 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 yeah that would be funny challenge accepted so we did it <laughs> you wouldn't be able to tell just by reading the revised terms and conditions that this is the gruffalo we didn't write it in rhyme although we did a secret version mm-hmm. that rhymes um, we we didn't <laughs> write it in rhyme, but what we did was we analyzed the, the, the Gruffalo text, right? We looked at the sentence mm-hmm. length and the word length and the, the familiarity of the vocabulary and, and that kind of thing. And we brought those elements into our writing mm-hmm. to make sure that we have a, a piece of work that, that can be understood by, by a, a younger audience. And that was a huge amount of fun. You know, it, it wouldn't necessarily be, be visible to anyone from the outside. So it's not like... Mm-hmm. We were we were unprofessional, or you know, it it was yeah. still it was still a formal piece of writing, and it was still a professional piece of writing, even though it was based on the Gruffalo. And it sounds like a much better uh, outcome as well. So it's, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Fun law is not taking away from the law, but it is actually enhancing, enhancing it and making it better. It Absolutely like. accessible. Nice. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. And I think that's, yeah, super important as you talked about the user um, centricity of mm -hmm. the approach, which I think is pretty cool. And just to, to tie it all together, are there any other uh, cool examples or other examples of how you or other teams or lawyers are already already doing fun law? Just because I'm enjoying your, your Graffalo <laughs> so in examples. The, in the Graffalo example, we, um, we added a fun sort of tongue-in-cheek little icon um, that mm -hmm. it's an inside joke. And if someone, if someone sees it and they get it, it'll probably make them chuckle. If they mm -hmm. don't, they're not even going to notice and, and it'll be, you know, just an, mm -hmm. an icon. But um, I yeah. think adding those little, those little Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We obviously, you know, we, we, we've, we've, for instance, made our service level agreement available online for people to read. And there are a bunch of those Easter eggs or in jokes um, in there I mentioned earlier. You know, just you have your normal force majeure or this wire or whatever you want to call it, flaws. Um, in there and you you I like zombie movies and zombie shows so we put in zombie mm -hmm. apocalypse you know and there we, we also um, played around a lot with the, in, the 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 interplay between um, images and and text so very mm -hmm. often these days you see people just adding icons to contracts and saying they've done legal design um, that yeah. no <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. You know, you've just covered the raisin and chocolate. <laughs> <So> <laughs> you need to um, think about how how your visuals um, either aid or augment what you've already written. So mm -hmm. that example mm -hmm. that Liesl mentioned is a perfect example of that. The the context was, you know, that there was a sentence or a heading, you know, what to do when something goes wrong. So this is what is normally mm -hmm. would be seen as a complaint section, and we. Mm -hmm put a, a little icon of a fan next to it um <laughs> i've got you <laughs> right it's not it's not you know it's not crass or anything some people will get it some mm -hmm. people won't and and it'll hopefully you know if someone wants to complain at least they'll do it having just chuckled a little bit at the allusion to mm -hmm. things hitting fans uh, <laughs> so you know there's there's loads of examples like that out there if you know where to look and then sometimes it's a little bit more apparent so it's like like um Oat, oatly the the oat milk company um mm -hmm. I, I saw i saw a billboard that they did that said our legal team says we can't call we can't call this ice cream but you can <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> right. I saw that one. I like that. <laughs> so that's obviously a copywriter and a lawyer got locked into a room and, and people said, don't come out until you've <laughs> found a way of, I've found a way around this problem. Um, so mm. sometimes it's, sometimes it's a little bit more, more in your face. Um, and, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's just, you know, we have a colleague um, that I happened to speak to yesterday. They do comic contracts. It's, mm. They're not funny, you know, so it's not, com it's not comedic contact, uh, contracts. But, you know, they, they found a way to make employment um, contracts more accessible for illiterate workers. Um, mm -hmm. People people appreciate the fact that you've gone the extra mile to make something less intimidating or understandable to them. So they just come into the, the relationship with mm -hmm. a better mindset. Um, so there are mm -hmm. loads of examples in the legal design field of, of people who are doing this, evoking emotion with their legal rights. Yeah, yeah. I post yeah, about them often brilliant. on on LinkedIn. Whenever we yes, see it, so if you're not already, give Elizabeth a follow <laughs> on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it's inspiring to see all these different examples and hear what you're doing. And I think, as we touched on, yes, better outcomes and for for the law and for the business and for the teams. But also, it really does impact the overall vibe of your day to day, which can't be underestimated. Yeah. Um, from a kind of career satisfaction life satisfaction um, exactly and it feels meaningful so. mm -hmm. exactly and at the end of the day that's what we're we're all here for yeah. so yeah no, that's brilliant well thank you so much i don't know if you have any final comments please do feel to feel free to join the know. movement and if you're wondering yes. how to join the movement reach out i'm always happy to to get people started um just in in thinking a bit differently um Give us a follow on on LinkedIn. We are planning, um, you know, a, a couple of sort of events where we want to talk oh. to more people about this. I think, you know, just just open yourself up to 
to everything mm -hmm. that is possible. Um, you don't have to practice law the way you were taught. <laughs> and there's nothing mm -hmm. really that's holding you back. So jo join us and join the fun. <laughs> mm, yes, it's freeing. Exactly. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's kind of thinking you're like, how if we had no idea of what traditional law looked like how would we build it from the ground up now and I think we would we would incorporate fun mm. and, and that sort of thing so yeah thank you so much for sharing all your examples and your advice and your tips um it's been a, a fun conversation if I, if I may say so, so yeah. thank you so much for sharing thanks for having us <laughs> thank you